Welcome back. Today we're testing the new 900 Global Zen Soul. If you like what we do, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and check us out on Patreon. First impressions, the 900 Global Zen Soul feels like very clearly the OG Zen's bigger brother. Okay, let's get into it. So at first I was thinking, am I ever going to find a pocket? Um, usually I don't have so much trouble manipulating motion to, to kind of get a visual on more direct trajectories. I, I was simply unable to find the pocket until I got past the third arrow. Um, I have come to find uh, that the house shot uh, has been shortened just a touch um, foot or so. Um, and, that, and that kind of explains some of the bigger hook, but it is still over 40 feet, just to be clear. Um, and, and the Zen soul is obviously a strong ball. With that said, for all the struggle I had until then, the ball looked spectacular between the third and fourth arrow and beyond, frankly. That big, bulky Meditate core, while being massive, doesn't chug lazily down lane in, in my eyes. The, the ball has a heavy but big move down lane. It just seems to be able to generate that big turn. I, I struggled with length, as I said, until I found enough oil. Let's briefly talk about arsenal placement for a moment. Uh, ultimately, I placed this ball in the strong control category. I know it's certainly on the angular side of control, but that's where I would have it in my arsenal. And you can see that the Zen Soul is basically a Zen with traction in my mind, whereas the Zen Master is stronger, but definitely smoother down lane. Back to the video, you can see that the motor is torquey as misses in really drive through the pins hard. In fact, it's it's sometimes a way I trick house patterns when playing to the friction is too over under. Um, so it's just basically pulling the break point in. Um, the ball's also very responsive to friction. So um, ultimately, like I said, the, the Zen Soul is, is simply a, a ton of ball. I, it, it, I would say it made me look like a superhero going even past the fourth arrow with ease. Um, rarely did I leave a flat corner in this test. Now here are a few shots, two-handed, and, and um, I, obviously I, I had a little bit of physical struggles, um, patterns, a little bit more hooking than previously, um, as mentioned, but the, the strength of the Zen Soul definitely didn't help my cause to make this test easier. I, I, I tried to use the inside break point to make it a little easier to float the ball, but not a chance. I mean, the Zen Soul is simply too strong. Um, you know the saying, it wants to read at my feet. <laughs> anyway, I had to deliberately use less axis rotation um, or the ball was absolutely sideways. I had no other way to trip it. Um, ultimately, I was able to roll it a bit more forward, but man, this is definitely a strong ball for this pattern. All right, so let's have a look at the power player's perspective. Uh, with Sean on longer term uh, injured reserve, we have a new tester representing the power player. So I'll introduce Tyler, uh, who's testing the Zen Soul with us today. Uh, Tyler also has a Zen in his current arsenal. Um, it almost seems everyone does these days. So, um, you know, same deal. The thought of having a higher volume, same shape option is enticing. Um, initial thought is that is that's what he saw. Um, he found a quick home between third and fourth arrow and, and just whacked the pocket. Uh, he's got a little higher average speed to match a higher rev rate, so he's still rev speed matched. He also has to be deep enough to allow the ball to get the length it needs to avoid overhooking. So the length is the function of the pattern relative to the surface of the ball. And you can see that the ball wants to fire up with its torque, and when it finally has some traction out in the mid lane, it gets into that heavy transition and roll. This is a big core to be sure, and you can see and feel that. As the lines start to break down, Tyler started to see some 10 pins, so it was a sign he needed to find some fresh oil. Uh, he did try a couple things, including moving right, but quickly realized that moving left and wheeling is more the ticket. A quick comparison to his Zen, you can see a very similar roll, like I said, with simply a bit more length. So standing in the same spot, the Zen gets to the pocket, but not quite as strongly since it has less traction. So basically it goes from, you know, Zen soul being flush to Zen being, you know, having light swishers. So you can easily decide which ball you want simply by the traction situation and, and not have to worry about reaction shape, which can be ideal. 
All right, now Brian is testing the uh, Zen Soul, and, and for context, Brian has an original Zen in his arsenal, as he loves the motion, and it is quite effective for him. So the concept uh, or the notion of the Zen Soul um, uh, being same shape or more tra traction is you know, a, an attractive uh, proposition. So you know, get the same motion, handle a little more volume, why not, right? Uh, you can see right away that Brian gets that nice strong arc to the pocket. The ball definitely has traction, but not the kind of traction that simply bleeds all its energy. And I like that. Some balls are so strong they read and hook forever. Um, and I think this one kind of falls into that category. Some balls are so strong they bleed energy and completely die. Um, this one, like I said, definitely fits in the former. Now with Brian's game, sometimes balls like, like this push him in on the house shot just enough where there's a bit of loss of continuation. As long as he watched his speed, he could manage the Zen Soul from in. Um, for the casual observer, you might think, well, what about the deflection and some tempins? Well, at the end of the day, these balls need to separate themselves. And the Zen Soul would be more ideal on a higher volume for Brian. So then he could stay in the same area but get a bit more stored energy. So keep that in mind as you watch here. And maybe your, your shot plays heavy or long when fresh and then settles down. Boom, there you go. A quick comparison to the original Zen shows simply the difference in traction. Same heavy roll, maybe I would say a touch of over-under with a little less traction. It still looks good, but you can see that the lower traction of the shiny uh, surface means varying responsiveness to different levels of oil on the edge of the pattern. Final thoughts. While I thought the Zen Soul might be the Goldilocks of the Zen line lineup, it's actually something else. I, I think the original Zen is still the Goldilocks. However, I believe the Zen Soul is what I expected the Zen Master to be. Uh, basically, if you love the Zen Motion and you just wanted more traction for the condition, the Zen Soul finally gives you that. The Zen Master is not a bad ball, it just offers a pretty different motion with the solid S77 cover versus the Soul's S77 hybrid. Um, and this is the challenge sometimes. The, the Zen and the Zen Soul do not really fit squarely in a box as I drew, but are amazing balls. So in a way, they are perfect if you wanted to create, a, say, a smaller arsenal of them because of the fact that they straddle the line between defined and control. Um, in another way, they may encroach uh, on the territory of other more squarely fitting balls in the category, if, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's a bit of a dilemma. <laughs> Maybe not a bad one. Either way, I don't see bowlers being unhappy with these balls.